Hello and welcome back to Stamp and Chat. Um, welcome back if you're joining me from this morning. I'm just going to wait to see if anybody is coming in to join us live. Wait for my page to refresh. Do say hello if you're joining us. Okay, I'm in the right place, that's always good. I'm just going to share this over to my private group for those who watch me over there and then I'll be with you. Okay, so welcome back. I can see there's someone, someone here. So welcome back to Stamp and Chat round three of ornamental envelopes so a bit of Christmas crafting today we are on week three of this round and if any of you are stamping live with me you need to pull out your card bag for week three and we can get crafting in a moment so these are the previous two weeks that we did this was last week's and this was the first one we've done now I've, I have zoomed in quite a bit, I hope I'm not too close, so we shall see. Please feel free to share this, um, this live with, with your friends on your Facebook page. The more people that see it, um, the better it is for me. Um, I also will upload this to my YouTube channel as well so if you're unable to stay and watch for the duration then you can come back later and catch the replay. So let's bring in and show you, let's pop that to one side for the moment and bring in and show you what we are making today. Quite a clean and simple card, I don't know whether I might embellish it slightly this one not sure but it's I might put some embellishments on these but when I tried it before I just thought maybe it was a bit too much so quite a straightforward card and those of you that are stamping live with me you will need the cherry cobbler ink and a Sahara sand ink these were both included in the cost of the class we also had a selection grabbing them out of the packet of the quite Christmas quite Christmas classic Christmas papers look this is all I have left from this pack I've been motoring my way through it it's now back in stock for those of you that wanted to get it you were able to order it um, add it onto your order but it was on on back order so it, it will begin shipping as from yesterday I believe it came back into stock I'm also using the curvy Christmas stamp set which is a limited edition that's available from now up until the 4th of January. Absolutely love this and I do have a class to share with you on this where, which includes the stamp set or you can have just the kits only if you've already purchased this. But I will share that at the end of the video hoping that my phone battery is going to hold up because obviously I've had to pop it back on charge after the live this morning. So without further ado, let's get onto this card. You will also need your shaded spruce ink pad. Those of you that did the first round of stamp and chat with me with the tag buffet kits, you received that ink pad. So I know there's a few of you who have already got it. You need to locate your whisper white background, uh, background base card for this one. And then as I've said, week number three for your card pack. Pop your insert to one side for the moment. And I think what we'll do, which is what we always do, we do our stamping first. So take a piece of scraps. So I'm gonna set this all just to one side. We'll do some stamping, do some die cutting, and then we'll pop it all together. So I've got this lovely piece of part used grid paper on my foam mat this is the foam mat that you buy for the stamparators it's very inexpensive it's two pounds 75 and it it just really helps with using photopolymer stamps now i'm going to bring back in 
Morning, Belle. How are you? Nice to have you join us. Are you dipping in really quickly? <laughs> You've got other things you should be doing. So we're using the ornamental envelopes. Today we are using these two well, I say two, there's only one of them. We're going to be using this stamp, but inking it up twice. We're using this lovely little ferny image that I'm going to turn into a wreath. And we're also using this little trio of flowers here as well, which is really fab because they're not necessarily Christmas orientated. So you could use them for other things. We're also using this corner stamp as well which is quite a tricky one to stamp with because it's so delicate the the dotty part of the stamp is so delicate and it's easy to be a bit heavy-handed with it but we will cross that bridge when we come to it so let me just bring back in the card for anyone that's popping in Belle doing a quick blog post while watching oh bless you. you you know you can always come back later anyway and that's what I often do when I'm working I like to um watch what you guys are all up to out there and connect with you via your facebook lives and your videos um, and it just feels like i've got someone in the room with me when i'm when i'm working so it's it's kind of company i do love it okay so first let us stamp the wreath so take that ferny stamp that i mentioned and if i hold it above the, this stamp on the block you will see that I have manipulated my stamp to make it into like a U shape so a semicircle and that's what you're looking for so because it's photopolymer you can stick it onto your block and move it um, kind of bend it so that's what you need to do so you need to pop it onto your block and turn it into like a semicircle Hello Jacqueline, you're back again. You still haven't done the hoovering. Uh-oh. Were you crafting though? That is the question. Or have you been doing other good housework jobs? Let's start. Let's turn over. A bit of stamping from earlier. So what we need to do before we stamp this down onto our whisper white layer, we want to make sure that it, when we stamp two together, they're going to resemble something that looks quite circular. So open up your Sahara sand. Those of you that, that were doing the class would have had a nice new style one. And I'm just going to ink this up and I'm going to stamp it twice. Once, one way. And then I'm going to join them together and hope that it's circular. That is not bad. I did have a little practice before I came onto the live. If it doesn't quite look right, just lift your stamp and move it um, and have another go until it looks quite circular. So what we're, we're going to do is take this long piece that was in your kit um, and we're going to ink up the wreath up near the top here. So back into the Sahara sand. Get one's hair out of the way and stamp this one down just looking trying to get it it's closest to the top it doesn't have to be too close remember you have the emergency side you can see here I've really rocked when I've inked that up but I have two hands on my stamp so I'm keeping it nice and stable now if this isn't central enough I will just turn over my page my paper and do it on the other side I'm going to have another go if not if this side goes wrong I've got ink on there now no I'm going to stick with it I'm going to go with it it will be fine it can't be perfect all of the time can it we have to have these little little moments so that's our wreath what we're going to do now is die cut the bottom of here and Quite a few of you who ordered this stamp and chat round purchased the dies to go along with the stamps as well and they are really fabulous they're really good so i've used one of these envelope liner dies to cut the bottom off of here you've also got this option but it's a slightly bigger scallop on it and i wanted the small 
scallops. So I've taken just the smallest die from the set and I will also be cutting this one as well. So just bear with me one second while I turn around and die cut this. I'll leave you with my card to look at <laughs> so you can have a little study of what I'm doing. So I'm simply trimming the bottom of the straight edge to give me a nice scalloped finish. So that's what I've just done. And then I'll just run the other one through. So I'm not using my magnetic plate at the moment. So I'm just taping it down with washi tape so that it doesn't move. So there I have my two layers that are going to sit together like that. Have I done it straight enough? That's fine. Okay, we'll pop those just to one side for the moment because we need to stamp a couple of these hanging decorations. And we also need to use this little flower stamp as well. And we need two colours with that one. So we're going to have to clean in between. So we'll start, let's open up the cherry cobbler. And just pop two of these. Have I got the right one? I have, haven't I? That's quite heavy. My cherry cobbler is new. I'm going to do another one and just be slightly more gentle. And first I'm going to stamp these flowers in my paler colour first, so into the Sahara sand, so that when I clean I just make sure that my stamp is thoroughly clean before I go back in with a cherry cobbler. Oh, that wasn't very good. I've got a bit of fluff on there. Let's do that one again. and just give it a quick clean and then with my cherry cobbler do another set aren't they pretty very pretty flower let's move those to one side and those inks just for the moment and I'm going to don't need that do I pop these through grab my embossing plates, cutting plates and we have two little dies that work with this one and then one that cuts all of these three flowers out in one go. So I'm just going to grab a bit of washi tape. So if you don't or have never had a magnetic plate this is the way to ensure that when you are die cutting by taping it down it will just stop it from moving because there's nothing worse than stamping and then die cutting it and then finding that I thought I had the wrong plate then finding that it's moved when it's when you've ran it through the machine so I'm just going to tape those down grab my number three plate okay, let's do that one at the same time would make sense. My washi tape is very apt for the season, don't you think? It's a shame that we no longer sell washi tape because I do love it, although maybe it's a good thing because I have quite an obsession. I have a whole box full of washi tape. Oh, morning, Lynn. Nice to see you here. How are you doing? Did you enjoy our stamping session last night? You love the flowers, Bell. Have proper room again with this set. What does that mean? Oh, you missed out last night, Bell. You can catch up, honey. Um, 
I've saved it to the grease, so you can catch up. It's the great thing about technology. It's good when it works. I did have um, had problems with my phone battery, so I did have to pop off and then jump back on with the live again. Let's just push these flowers out. Are you going to come out? And we'll pop that one back on. Yeah, my phone battery, I had a little pop-up to tell me my phone was at 20%. So I decided to just come out of the live and then go back in. But that meant in order to charge my phone, I had to take my microphone out. So the sound was a bit dodgy, but it was okay. It just, it. the problem with my microphone is it has a really bad background sound like a hissing noise so that's the problem with my microphone and it's really not not good quality at all and i'm not happy using it without the microphone plugged in so let's just run this one back through and then that's our die cutting done you enjoyed it last night lynn oh thank you so i'm hoping once I finally decide which phone I'm getting, I was thinking of the 11 Pro, um, but they're a bit hard to come by now. Apple don't have any in stock. If I get that one, then I can talk and talk all night long with you guys without having to worry about battery issues. Got some thread stuck here. So we'll be able to have longer sessions with better quality. Let's just push these out. Don't need all of these. In fact, we only need one of the large one. Pop that back on my magnetic sheet so that I don't lose them. Now the next important part is on this layer. So bring this layer back in and you need to mount up this um, stamp, which is what you would pop on the outside of an envelope to write your address on. That's what it's designed for. Is it on there straight? Doesn't look too bad. Now what we're gonna do, you need to take, I try to keep a post-it note inside of here. I did have one in here that I'd use, but I've put a new one in. And what we're going to do is stamp this little row of dots, okay? I'm gonna grab a pencil so that I can just make a rough, a rough, line of where I want them to be. So one coming down in the middle. So basically we're going to have something that looks like this. So I think like that and then we can rub that line out after. If you do not feel confident to ink this stamp up because these dots are so delicate when you stamp it's easy for them to squidge and move it's easy to kind of um what's the word you can make it make it blurry if you press too hard it's it's not going to look very fine and very pretty so who's coming in oh hi sarah how are you you finally got time to watch a live you were using this kit at the weekend oh i just absolutely love it isn't it fab you love the baubles yeah we do have we do have this problem of the photopolymer staining i don't know bell have you got any tips on cleaning the stamps we did have um a little stamp pad that that you could clean these stamps with but we don't sell it anymore and i don't know why we stopped selling it maybe usually we stop selling a product because we don't sell enough of it so i'm not sure um i mean i don't mind that it stains them they still work the same it doesn't affect them but anyway it's lovely to see you on here just seems like forever that i that i saw you time just goes doesn't it okay so you need sahara sand ink and what we're going to do is use this post-it note we'll take those out of the way for the moment to mask off anything above where we want these dots to be so we want this piece of Whisper White as straight as possible on our grid. I'm gonna ink up the red one because I can see what I'm doing. 
So I'm just inking up one run. So when I stamp it down like that, I've just got one run. And as I've said, you have to press gently with this stamp. Belle, yours are pretty stained. Yeah, sometimes you can't, that's what happens. You can't see the finer detail on, on a stamp. Once it gets stained, it's difficult to see sometimes when you're lining it in. So I want to create just this little line of dots here. Just ink that again. Oh, I need to get right over the top here, which is tricky. And having the post-it note here just stops anything above. If I didn't put the post-it note, you can see it would have stamped right the way across the wreath. And then keeping that nice and straight, I'll just pop that one in there. Ink and, I'm inking out, I don't know if this is in shot, I'm literally inking just this one row of dots. If you do not feel confident to do this, take a ruler, take a marker pen and just draw some dots in. I'm just going to have to hold that down a moment. I'll have this one a bit longer because we can always cover it up. Now, I'm just going to test with my adhesive remover if that will just rub pencil. It does, but not brilliantly. And I've got a rubber over here, but it's not the best. It smudges. I mean, who buys a rubber to rub out pencil and then it smudges it? And I've got, I have got some nice erasers in my posh pen box, but I will have to go digging in there to find them. So let's have a little go with the adhesive remover and see if that just takes off some of the pencil. That's not too bad for now can get a proper rubber on it later. So can you see, I could have maybe done with another dot just up there, but to be honest, once you've got these on, it's not really going to matter. Okay, what should we do next then? So let's take this layer and pop some foam pads on the back. Got lots of washi tape stuck to it now. So grab your dimensionals. I'm always calling these foam pads, but I suppose that's what they are. Um, but the stamping up term is dimensionals. And just lay them all around evenly. We don't want any sagging. So make sure you pop some through the middle as well because you don't want your card sagging when it's been through the post. And then just pull off the backs. I've moved my bin again. And then we're ready to start sticking this card together. In fact, pull your backs off, but don't stick it anywhere for a moment. Let's move this mat out of the way. I'm not a fan of working on the mat all the time. This layer here, yours would have already been die cut. You need to take your strip, let's move you out of the way, of this lovely cherry cobbler Let's just snip a bit off. Classic Christmas designer paper. Pop some Tombow on the back. Got a bit on my grid then. Just lift that up. And lay it up just a little way down from the top. Now, I don't think I cut this piece for you guys, so just cut a strip off of one of your sheets. This measures half an inch. Okay, so this measurement is half an inch. So we'll just stick that one on and snip off the end like this. And we can go ahead now and pop this layer on top centrally like so. Okay. It slightly bothers me. Well, I'm not going to say slightly. It bothers me that my wreath isn't in the circle. But somebody will be glad to receive this, I'm sure. Now take your shaded spruce layer. Before we go any further with building up, we need to stamp. Oh, we've got sunlight coming in. How annoying. I mean, I'm not sad to see the sunlight coming in, but... Let me just see where it's coming from. My clothes are blind. That might be a bit better. There. 
I mean, I don't want to shut the sun out, but not very good to have, have it coming in on here. So we're just going to stamp this corner piece. So mount up this stamp here. We need shaded spruce. And this is tricky, guys. Practice. Please practice with this stamp because I'm going to show you what happens. If you're not gentle, it moves. You need to apply a good amount of pressure to have it even. And the, the biggest mistake you'll do is press really firmly and you'll rock it this way. That, that's probably going to be your biggest mistake. So have a little play with it. Hold your stamp with both hands and try to apply a good amount of pressure on this side but not too much on the other side. I have put in your kits an extra strip so if you go wrong you can stamp on this strip and you can stick it over and cover this layer. If you don't want to do this part you've got the emergency side as well do remember that. Just going to take off that ink from the corner. Right, hair out of the way, hovering over and a good bit of pressure. If you've got the Stamparatus, this would be a good one to use for this. Now, it could have done with being a bit tighter in the corner because we have to allow up for our other layer that's going on. I'm gonna have to hover right over here for this one. So a good firm press without moving. But I do love the effect of it. It's, it. You do have to practice with that one, but I do love the effect. It's very pretty. So before we do any more layering and sticking, check your fingers aren't too inky and bring in your base layer of Whisper White. This is the one that's scored for you. And then we'll stick this shaded spruce piece straight down onto it. So Tombow on the back. I'm hoping my battery isn't gonna get to 20% because when I get to 20%, a little window pops up and then I can't press end at the end of the live until I've closed the window. So annoying. And then I have to take it out of my holder and then it looks all wobbly and unprofessional. So I'm trying to move speedily, but not too fast. So next is your shaded spruce layer. And this one just goes down centrally like so next so remember I said if if this process went wrong stamp it again on this piece and simply stick it over the top and nobody will ever know never ever this is another piece of the classic Christmas DSP and we're going to I've given you have to actually trim this it's quarter of an inch wide so one of your pieces just pop it in your cutter and you don't even have to measure it just trim off um, a skinny sliver like this and cut it off like that roughly to have an over overhang now I'm going to fishtail the ends of these but rather than using my scissors oh I've just gone to get my punch and it's not there I'm going to use the classic label punch, another little tip, and I'm just going to pop it in, because it's a skinny strip it will work like that. Because it's quite a small one, I cannot see if that is central, it's not too bad. It's quite a small just do that one up and pop it back in my box of goodies next to me. So I'm already playing with the next Stampin' Chat and I've got a, a box of goodies here that 
that I've been playing with yesterday creating the projects ready for the next round. So we'll pop some Tombow just at the very top here just to hold this piece in place and just stick that one down centrally with as much of an even border at each end as possible could come down a bit lower but I'm going to keep it like that to keep my wreath down a bit lower next we can add in our little baubles or ornaments whatever you like to call them so I'm just going to pop a dimensional these are the mini dimensionals if you've been watching me on videos lately you'll know these are my favorites as opposed to the larger ones we'll just pop that one down in there is that central and that one a bit lower oops that was stuck to me then and this one a bit lower so these are quite a bit lower than i've done on my original card okay and then these flowers that you stamped and cut I've got tombow on me so you're going to have a few spares left we need a large cherry cobbler one and two small Sahara sand ones and you can keep those for another project later so if you are stamping along with me while you've got everything inked when we're finished don't put it all away create another card while you've got everything out so just on the back of these the mini dimensional will fit just behind the small flower quite tricky to get the backs off of the small ones that just stuck on my grid and we'll just pop those in opposites in fact I am hiding these gaps so just pop those on like that and then this one over this side to give a bit of balance and then you'll need to take your linen thread straighten it out and just tie a little bow I do love this linen thread can anyone else agree with me on that? It's gorgeous. I love it because it's so neutral and it just goes with everything. Love the natural look of it. Right, give it a tug. Trim off the ends. Make sure we've got even loops and take a glue dot and you take your pick tool or the end of your scissors, roll up your glue dot and just pop that in the middle. Never wants to come out. And then pop your little bow on there like that. So we're almost done. To finish, I'm using, as I mentioned earlier, the Merry Christmas stamp. And this is from the limited edition curvy Christmas set that's available at the moment I've got a, a little class to show with you after battery depending of course if not I will come back on and do a live and show you this class so you'll need your shaded spruce ink and you've got a little skinny strip in in your pack just going to ink that one up nothing fancy just stamp it straight down move you and just snip off the ends a couple of dimensionals on the back of here it's gone a bit grey out there guys 
looking a bit grey considering that sun was trying to come in just now. Should be opening up the blind again. And then to finish, let's just move those tails of my bow. I'm just going to add this one in the centre. If you don't want it in the centre, you could pop it somewhere else, wherever you like. But mine is going in the middle. In hindsight, maybe the bow could have gone on at the end. Like so. And there we go. Card is finished. So, as I said, you could pop on some of the embellishments. Mine are falling off. If you want to, you could pop some on, but I'm going to leave mine plain, I think. I'm not sure. What do you think? Should I put some on? I'm aware that I've only got a few small ones left, and I'm thinking... We've still got two more weeks of this this series and I'm not sure what I've used on the following one. So I think I'm going to leave it plain for now. Could always put a couple down there. And then I feel it would be slightly out of balance. I'm going to leave them plain because that's how my original card was. Let's find something for the middle of our card. So let's bring back in the foam pad. And so you'll need to find a greeting for the centre. Because I've already used this stamp set, I think I'm going to pop on here. May your days be merry and bright. Sarah, can you see how badly these are stained? It's just what happens and I'm wondering if there is anything else out there that we can get to help clean our stamps. I'm just locating the block. Let's use this huge one. Very huge. Is that the right way up? Yeah. And let's do it in shaded spruce because it's right next to me. I hope this is going to fit actually. Oh, it doesn't. That wasn't a very good plan, was it? How can we do this? I don't want to run my battery down thinking about this. What if we take our post-it note? This could go wrong, could go very wrong. Where's my post-it note? And we ink up half. So if we ink it up, ink up the whole thing. And let's lay it here first. May your days be merry in the middle. I'm going to faff now for a minute guys, bear with me, all will become clear. The aim is to not stamp and bright and get it straight, it could be a big fail but may your days be oh, merry, not bad a bit crooked but that's how the stamp is and then we'll have and bright Let's ink up that end let's think about may your days be merry where do we want that and bright somewhere over here so let's Let's just pop that there. Oh, you're moving. It won't stick. <laughs> Put myself right on the spot here doing this. I'm not happy with that at all. I think that looks awful. I'm going to have another go. I know it's going to be on the back and it's white. One more go. So let's straighten straighten ourselves up a bit to start with so if we have that like that and we lay that I don't want to stick once I use the sticky part of the post-it note it's going to be stuck in the way so somewhere about there get this layer straight may your days be merry 
and bright is coming. Do you ever do this guys? Faff around and we'll have bright and bright down over there. Stick you down. Doesn't help to have a curly post-it note. Right, let's have you straight and bright. That will do. That will do. It's not really what I had in mind. But next time I have to remember that if we're doing a landscape card, that would be perfect. Let's pop this one down inside our card. Move these inks out of my way and check for ink on my fingers before touching this nice white based card. And a bit of Tombow on the back. And just lay that one in. So a post-it note can be really helpful guys. It's always handy to have some in your craft box. Now the only thing is you can slightly see through that. Because I've used the shaded spruce and it's quite dark. So there we go. Card is complete. Hope you've enjoyed watching me put this one together. Absolutely adore this stamp set and the dies. Um, they're still available to order. We have 10% off everything in the annual catalogue today so this stamp set isn't included because it's in our like winter mini supplement um, but we have 10% off everything up until just before 11 o'clock tonight you can place your online order I'm doing another order at lunchtime so if there's anything you'd like to take advantage of the sale then please do get in touch uh, I just want to share with you another online class in the post that I am offering and it's using the curvy Christmas stamps so we've got this stamp set included and then there are four card kits so we have this one I nearly put that down then on a stamp wet one then we have this one then this one here so lots of layers so I've used the the curvy dies as well and then finally this one so this is focusing just on this curvy Christmas stamp set and this is only available during December and up until the 4th of January the class consists of the stamp set and the cards card kits with envelopes with all die cut pieces for £35 and that includes postage and packaging as well so if anybody would like to order that please let me know I'll be putting all the details up on my website later and on my Instagram if you don't follow me on Instagram come come and find me and I will also be popping all the information um, on this group as well and over on my VIP group for those of you that follow me over there so if you already own the stamps or you have something that you think might work with it you can just purchase the card kits on their own they will be 15 pounds posted and you will get all of your layers and die cuts as well obviously no stamped images because i'm not permitted to include those so that is my curvy christmas class also i need to just mention before my battery goes is let's move these inks the paper pumpkin kit the joy to the world this is included in our 10 percent extravaganza today so you can purchase this it's normally 20 pounds but if you purchase today you'll get two pounds off all orders placed with me today will receive an extra free gift from me if you're shopping online and using my host code you will get a free gift anyway if your order is over £30 and those gifts come out to you the following month from when you place the order so if you place an order at the beginning of a month you have to wait until the end until that order is actually closed even though your order gets shipped to you directly the order is still left open for other people to come in and and add to it and that's how the host code works it means I get to share the stamping rewards with all of you guys who shop online with me just to say thank you these are some of the extra projects that I've created I've done a couple of videos on these um, I've done the video on this one 
So this is just using extra pieces on top of the kit. So I've created four cards, three cards even, and this one here. So using the stamps in the set. And then I also did this little treat pouch because I just thought it was cute. And it's nice to give something that's just fun but inexpensive as well. So really great that you can grab yourself 10% off of the paper pumpkin kit. I don't think I've got anything else to share. Maybe I'll just quickly show you the next round of Stampin' Live. I know some of you came in this morning and saw this. So the next round of Stampin' Up is using the Coming Home stamp set. I'm including three blends and I'm just including the light version. So you cannot buy these singly anymore. They come as a light and a dark. So I'm including the Crumb Cake, the Just Jade and the Pool Party and you'll get the light version of each. I will hold on to the dark version and use it for another class but if you want to purchase the dark version then you just add on the difference. Again with the, the stamp set you may want to add the dies and I'm creating cards that are non-Christmas so here's going to be one of the cards the first card that we'll do at the stamp and chat so the first live will go be, be go live I was going to say beginning of December but it's not it's the 15th of December so you don't have to pay for this yet payment will be early December um, it's £38.95 so as I said it includes the stamps the three blends it includes five card kits with envelopes with pre-cut die pieces. You'll get a sponge wedge in there and postage and packaging is included on that as well. So that's my next stamp and chat. If you want to book, you can. I'm opening booking for it already um, because I just want to get ahead of the game with everything because we're going to have some busy, busy times coming up. So without waffling on for any longer i think the only other thing i can tell you which i did mention this morning is that i will be doing some gift vouchers for anybody who is stuck for christmas gifts you can give vouchers to your friends or family or you can ask your family to get vouchers for you so with the new mini catalogue coming out on the 5th of January with celebration um, there could be a lot of new products that you want to treat yourself to so what better way than having a voucher for Christmas to spend on something that you find fun and you love doing so I will be designing maybe this afternoon um, some little pouches to pop these into so you get a little handmade pocket for these so if you're interested in my gift vouchers or my wish list service so if you've got a wish list of products give it to your loved one give them my details and they can come to me to order the products just remember the last delivery date for stamping up is the 9th of december to allow time to get it here from christmas because things are slowing down um delivery companies are getting snowed under and things will start to slow down a little so don't leave it too late so i think that's all from me for now my battery seems to have held up it will probably pop up any second now um so without going on any more thank you so much for joining me i will pop this onto youtube so you can catch up later if you came in halfway through take care everybody i hope that we can stamp together again very soon and i will just say bye for now so cheerio